Okay, so these are some voicings that I use when I want to get out of the open position and up the neck when I'm playing in the key of A minor. I don't know if they're really gypsy jazz voicings. I own some Django Reinhardt records, but I am not. And I once recorded a Saran Ferret tune with some people, but that doesn't make me a gypsy jazz guy by any stretch of the imagination. But I did just name drop a gypsy jazz violinist who is not Django Reinhardt, so that must count for something. Um, anyway, these are the voicings that I use. Uh, I didn't make this up. I got most of this idea from um, a jazz pianist named Barry Harris, who I had a lesson, one lesson with, with a bunch of guitar players a very long time ago on the west side of Manhattan when he had his jazz workshop. And he showed us this idea of how to connect up uh, chords um, using diminished chords in between uh, the main chords that you were interested in. And it's a really cool idea, and it took me until now to really uh, like understand and apply it to my playing. So anyway, the idea is you take minor chord voicings in the key you're in, in this case A minor, because it's such a good guitar key. We'll do it here. And you play minor sixth voicings up the neck. And then you turn all of the E7 inversions into E7 flat nine chords, which are also diminished voicings. And not only can you then have these ways to get around on each of those chords, but you can intercut them so that they make up scales and resolve to each other. So what those are and how to apply them, that's what we're here to do. The idea is if you're playing in an alternating thumb context, then you can get out of open position using these voicings because they all have four strings so there's some place for your thumb to go so how to do all that that's what we're here to do so the A minor voicings look like this. We take open position A minor, top four strings. So we've got the fifth on top. Now we can take the fifth and raise it a whole step to the sixth, and now we have an A minor sixth voicing. Here's the fifth and the root and the flat third and the sixth. Next we can go up here, and here we've got, you can picture that A minor chord, like the beginning of this. It's My Funny Valentine, and it's, um, oh, Stairway to Heaven, and uh, a bunch of other things, Michel and Mabel. It's that chord that you get to at the end of all of those, right? It's got the root, the fifth, the flat third, and then the sixth. So there's an A minor sixth voicing. And then next we go here, and so if you picture this chord, this like a D minor chord that we've slid up. And here's the root, and here's the fifth, and then you take the root down to the sixth, and then here's the flat third on top. So. And finally this one, which has uh, the flat third, and then the sixth, and then the root, and then the fifth on top. And you have to do another bar to get those two notes. All right, so there's the basic open chord plus four A minor six voicings. So that in and of itself is cool because they all have, like I said, a note on the fourth string. So you can themselves they're kind of cool sounding. Now the E chords we're going to basically take E7 chord voicings up the neck and then we're going to turn all of them to E7 flat 9 chords by raising the root of each four note voicing. So if we start here with E7 we've got the flat 7 on the fourth string 
and then the third, and then the fifth, and then the root. Right? And it's just the top part of this open chord. So we take this root and we add, go up a half step, that takes us to the flat nine of the chord. So there's the first one. And then we go to here, which is, you know, it's the it's the red house chord, or it's the it's the it's the Robert Johnson chord, or whatever you want to think of it as. But it's also got the root. It's not just the top three notes. Here's the third, here's the flat seven, here's the fifth, and here's the root of E. And now we take the root of E and go up a half step. Now it's an E7 flat nine. It's also a diminished chord, just like this one is. In fact, we're going to end up with this shape no matter what we do. Anytime we take an E seventh chord and raise the root a half step. So next we go here, which is like the Doc Watson chord right, from, from uh, Deep River Blues. The fifth, the root, the flat seven, and the third. So find the root, which is here, and go up a half step. And now you've got another diminished shape and another E7 flat nine. And finally here, the fifth and the root and the third and the flat seven and then here's the root it goes up a half step and we're back to the diminished shape so all of these chords are symmetrical which means you can bounce around between them you can also come into them by a half step or from above by half step So by themselves, if you were playing in A minor, or here's the big payoff. You can intercut the A minor 6 and the E7 flat 9 chords together to make a scale, which you can then use to play more melodic things instead of just jumping around chord to chord in sort of an arpeggiated way. So here's A minor, E7, A minor 6, E7, A minor 6, E7, A minor 6, E7, A minor 6, which means Basically, when you're on A minor, you do have to sort of be careful about the bass going to the E and then back to the A minor and then back to E so that the bass kind of lines up with the voicing that you're on, if it's an E minor or an A minor voicing. But when you're on the E, Can sort of use the A minor sixes as passing chords. I'm not sure that's like strictly legit. The safer thing to do when you're on E and you want to use an A minor shape as a passing shape, there are two things you can do. You can use an A minor shape as a passing shape, but only play the first string and the third string and kind of ghost the fourth string. Or you can half step into the next E chord. That's probably a way better choice. Um, so, so that's the idea. Those are the voicings that can get you out of open position. 
and how to connect them and how to start making melodic statements out of them. So I hope that gives you some things to work on and that it's fun to play around with. If you got any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I would love to hear from you and I'll see you next time. Thank you.